You remember the time you wanted to capture a beautiful, picturesque sunset and by the time you were ready with your big, heavy camera, its lenses, set up the ISO, shutter speed, the exposure, the sun had set and disappeared into the horizon. Or when you decided to hit that beach on your vacation with that bulky, big camera to take some great photos but were wondering how to protect it from both the sea and the sand, you didn't even take the camera out of the bag. Or when that perfect moment happened, and you had no camera with you because all that big equipment worth thousands of dollars was sitting at home. This or at least one of this has happened to all of us, not once but multiple times. Until smartphones with their smart cameras changed everything. While the whole dedicated camera experience and technology has improved over the years, it's no match to how far the smartphone camera technology has actually come. The camera inside your smartphone does absolutely incredible things. Things we would have only been able to dream of some 5 to 10 years back. To put this evolution of phone camera technology in perspective, let's take a stroll down history lane. The first camera phones were released in the year 2000 with a resolution ranging from 0.1 to 0.3 megapixels. We have progressed from 5 to 10 megapixels to 48, 64 and even 108 megapixel sensors on our phone. But in this war of numbers and specs, we sometimes fail to appreciate all the other amazing things that phone optics have been able to achieve. From single camera setup to dual to triple and now quad camera, the progression of smartphone cameras have helped you capture stunning photos and videos. But is the camera prowess of a phone only dependent on the lens, number of cameras and megapixel? Then how is it that flagship phones offer the best camera experience with lesser megapixels in their much cheaper counterparts? What is the role of the depth sensor, ultra-wide sensors, hybrid zooms, telephoto sensors and many other things that you get on a high-end phone camera? Well, if you appreciate your phone camera, it's important to understand everything that the processor does to power your favorite features. Yes, all that detail, that depth sensing, colors that pop, night mode, AI detection, all these super features are all happening and are related to the processor inside your phone, which is roughly the size of your fingernail, right? Today we'll talk about how Qualcomm Snapdragon enhances the capabilities of your smartphone's photography. We will understand the role of the image signal processor or ISP and how it empowers your smartphone to keep your pictures sharp and in focus. With high scores across key benchmarks, Snapdragon processors translate to incredible user experiences. We'll also be joined by tech experts to share their experiences about how the processor has defined the new age camera technology, how it's elevated the camera experience and how it's made sure that cameras on your phone are the only cameras you will ever need. Let's go and talk to Judd now, Senior Director, Product Management for Qualcomm Technologies Incorporated. Hi Jad, how are you? And I want to start off with my first question. What is an ISP? Thanks, Rajiv. An ISP, or image signal processor, is a hardware core inside of the Snapdragon chip. It connects to external image sensors, and internally it runs algorithms like auto exposure, auto white balance, and auto focus. It also runs pixel processing algorithms like noise reduction and color correction. And finally, the ISP outputs snapshots or videos, which the user can enjoy. Okay, so what makes Spectra ISP different from an ISP in a traditional, like a DSLR camera? What makes the Spectra ISP different than an ISP that you might find in digital still camera or a DSLR is the fact that it has to run inside of a smartphone. On a smartphone, the cameras are much smaller. The image sensors are smaller, which means they collect less light. Also, the lenses are smaller and cheaper. And therefore, the ISP has to work a lot harder to do the processing it takes to get really good, high quality output snapshots and videos. So Jad, is processing speed an important metric to achieve great image quality and experience? If so, how fast is Spectra? The speed of the ISP is really important for a good user experience on a camera smartphone. Spectra is fast, really fast. It, it processes up to two gigapixels per second. What that means is, is that it can process 64 megapixels at a 30 frame per second rate. So if you're shooting video, say at 8K 30 or 4K 120, or trying to do really fast burst photography. The Spectra ISP in our premium tier, the latest ISP being Spectra 480, 
has you covered. Yeah, you know, this is a question we get all the time. We all keep buying our phones based on this has triple camera, this has quad camera. But how do triple and quad cameras actually work? I mean, I know we are using them and we can switch from one to the other. How important are they in improving the overall user experience and the product they finally get? Yeah, a lot of smartphones today have multiple cameras on the back side sometimes three, even four cameras. And the reason for this is because multiple cameras on a smartphone are used to mimic a zoom lens on a digital SLR. So the multiple cameras on the back of a smartphone can be ultra wide, wide, telephoto, and sometimes even ultra telephoto or macro. So what this allows you to do, in a flat, very thin form factor in a smartphone, you can now have all these different fields of view and zoom between them seamlessly to mimic what you would get with a single sensor digital SLR camera and a zoom lens. What are the different types of camera sensors? What do they mean and how do they help the photographer? Yeah, there's really two main different types of image sensors. The first is what is called a bare sensor, but there's also another class of sensors that are monochromatic sensors. And these sensors output black and white images or they're infrared sensors. So they pick up on infrared activity in the light spectrum and they can actually sort of see in the dark. Um, and so those cameras are used for things like unlocking your phone uh, because you want to be able to unlock your phone not just in the daytime when there's light outside, but also at night. And these cameras can be mixed in a camera system on a smartphone to do lots of different things, like compute depth, for example. Thank you, Judd. Thank you so much for taking us through how all those lenses, the sensors, the camera inside our phone actually works. Fascinating. Now let's move on to somebody we've actually had on the show many, many times, Asim Varsi, Senior Vice President, Smartphone Business, Samsung India. Thank you so much for joining us, Asim. Let's talk about the first thing, and that is something we've been hearing a lot about, the upcoming new launch in the Galaxy M lineup, the Galaxy M51. Hi Rajiv, thank you for having me on your show. I must say I'm super excited to introduce the all-new Samsung Galaxy M51. It's the most powerful of all our M-series devices up until now. Keeping with our legacy of consumer-centric innovations for the Indian millennial consumers and the Gen Z consumers, we have packed in a 7,000 mAh battery on the M51. Under the hood of the M51, we have packed in a monstrous Snapdragon 730G processor. So coupled with a 618 Adreno GPU, as well as Samsung's AI gamers, multitaskers, heavy users, this is going to be their go-to device. So Asim, tell us, what is the Samsung single take feature and what role does the processor play in implementing this? What the consumer has to do is just click the camera button and over 10 seconds, the camera will record and give out an output of 10 different types seven different photographs and three different video formats. To be able to compute and apply all these different filters and apply all the different video forms, including hyperlapse, including boomerang, in these 10 total outputs, puts all the demand on the chipset of the device. And therein lies Snapdragon 730G SoC in the M51. The power of this chipset is exactly what enables the superlative single take experience that consumers can come to expect and experience from the camera of the Galaxy M51. And mind you, this camera is a quad cam stack up with a 64 megapixel at the rear, as well as a 32 megapixel at the front of the camera. I have personally tried out the single take feature on Samsung flagships like the S20 and I've been very impressed with that actual feature and what all it can do. But awesome, to view the great content clicked by the cameras, the display should also match up to it. What has the M51 got to offer on the display front? Absolutely, Rajiv. The brilliance of a camera and the content you capture on it is only as good as the brilliance of the display of your device. And this is where Samsung Galaxy M51's 6.7 inch Super AMOLED Plus Infinity O display really brings the edge into the camera and the content viewing experience. Thank you Asim for joining us. As always, it was wonderful to have you on the show.